Hey guys, welcome back to another video in June. This video is a little late, uh, about a, a week and a half late, because I was going to shoot a product and everything is still in assembly with that situation. I can't get it here in time to do a video for June, so we're gonna do that in July. So I wanted to do a topic that I had a lot of people ask me about when I worked at my past audio stores and something that is a philosophy of mine and we all have different philosophies on this, and I wanted to share my view. This is by no mean the golden rule. Um, it's just something that comes up a lot in, in forums, a lot of topics, and a lot of videos, and I wanted to give my two cents. Okay, so we're gonna talk today about what I prefer for my investment when it comes to spending my money on the speaker, or on the amplifier, in this case, integrated amplifier. And um, I'm gonna share with you guys, you know, some of you just starting out, some of you, you have been around for a long time, and uh, you know, again, you're gonna have your own take on this, but I'm gonna share mine. Um, for me, the choice that I made was going with the amplifier, pre-amplifier expenditure first. Um, this piece I got back in, I believe, 2015 or 17. I can't remember. Probably 2015. But uh, it, it, uh, it was $7,000 at the time. As you guys know, you know, uh, who know the Sonettos, uh, these that I have currently have now run 5,000. And uh, shoot, the uh, cables I have here run 5,500, right? So what's going on here? Well, th these are my findings, and I'm going to share them with you. So first of all, in my opinion... This is the brain, the heart and the brain of your entire system, okay? Um, when it comes to the turntable, the cassette player, which is out getting a full rebuild, by the way, the Nakamichi, um, the CD player, everything is fed into this. So this is going to translate uh, every source in my system to the speaker. Um, so when it comes to power, I, I, I like the Macintosh because it uh, can go into a, uh, a uh, 8 ohm, 4 ohm, or 2 ohm tap, and uh, it runs 200 watts no matter what, and that's continuous, okay? So I wanted something that had a, a, a high quality power source that would not gas out when I cranked it up, no matter what speaker I had, uh, no matter what ohm load. Uh, this is able to hook up pretty much any speaker I want, okay, with a two, four, and eight uh, tap in the back. Um, again, it's going to translate all of the music. Now, in this case, I have a pre I have a phono preamp built in here, moving magnet, moving coil, and I can e even adjust the ohm load on them. So uh, that was very important for me, again, because it came with that. I didn't have to spend money on an external phono stage, and this was actually a very good one in here. Uh, the DAC at the time, before, when I had my Meridian, I was using the Meridian 506 as a transport into this, and uh, I was using the built-in DAC. Now, it's been quite surpassed by my electric company yet right now, but that's a $4,000 DAC with streamer. Um, at the time, this built-in served its purpose well. Now, it's obviously um, obsolete, and uh, the newer version Macintosh uh, integrateds have a unit that comes in and out, uh, so you can replace it as upgrades happen throughout the years. But uh, for me, having the power that can handle everything, the, the clarity, a uh, wonderful pre uh, preamp in here, uh, having the built-in DAC, the phono stage, this is where I wanted to put my investment, okay? Now, secondly, why I did this. Every time I did an upgrade, okay, when I upgraded my interconnects, uh, well, you know, I started with the PBJs back in the day and now I'm at the select, but every time I did an upgrade, I would hear the speaker sound better. So it, let's say a reviewer gets a speaker in the house and they're doing a review on it. They're reviewing it with the equipment and the interconnects they have, and that's their assessment of the speaker. Well, if I would have done that back when I had the PBJs, Kimber Cable PBJs, now I have the Kimber Cable Selects. Well, this speaker sounds completely different. And I've upgraded, I think, three or four times my cables to get to this point where I'm at the select. And every time the speaker I had plugged into here sounded better than it did before. So now, if I were to sit down and review it, it's a completely different speaker. Oh, there's better sound stage. There's more bass. The highs are sweeter, right? It becomes completely different based on my upgrades in the system. So I knew that I could max out a speaker's performance before I needed to pay to upgrade it. 
Okay. You look at, you look at something on a showroom floor. You don't know what's hooked up to it. You don't know how it sounds. You get it on your equipment. It can sound completely different. Okay. So when I upgraded the interconnects, right, when I added isolation under all of my components, like the still points I have under here, right? Um, everything changed again. Well, more soundstage and uh, better uh, uh, tonal accuracy and, and, and uh, the timbres changed, right? Because of isolation. And again, this is translating that into the speaker. So that changed. Um, when I upgraded to the Synergistic Orange fuses and everything, it changed again. So you see my point is that even though I started with a cheaper speaker, every incremental change increased the performance and capabilities of that speaker beyond what I thought it was capable of doing. So um, for me, spending the investment overall on power, uh, don't even get me started with these, right? <laughs> Line conditioning changed it again. Much, much blacker background, more detail came out into the performances, made it sound like the speaker performed better. So that is one reason why I spent the core on this and then I did my upgrades. So point three here, when you upgrade a speaker, it is much easier to do so, plug and play, right? Pop the box open, put it out there, plug and play, you use it for a year or two, you unplug it, you put a new one in. All right, doing that with an integrated amplifier, you see all this back here? I mean, that is a hell of a job going through here and unplugging everything and plugging it in um, when you upgrade. So just for me, once the core set, it's funner to tweak and, and hear changes throughout the years and, and get different sounds out of your audio system. Uh, with a speaker change more than it is unplugging and replugging in an, an amplifier every time. Okay, so I chose to go with the amplifier slash preamp first. Then I think I've gone through four sets of speakers. I had the uh, Sonos Faber Minuetos. Then I went to the Chameleons. Then I went to the Venere S. And now I am at the um, Sonetto 5. Uh, the next will hopefully be the Olympicas, right? So the Olympica Novas. So there you go. For me, the investment through the years has definitely been worth going for the amplifier, rotating the speakers in and out for changes in my system sound once I had the foundation built, the amplifier, the line conditioning, the interconnects, the tweaks like the still points and the uh, uh, synergistic orange fuses, right? Everything created a synergy within the setup but it was all based on what this was translating power wise and preamp wise, um, what it was translating out to the speakers that never changed. So there you go, guys, that is, that is my feedback. I say amplifier first. Some of you guys say speaker first. Let me know what you guys have done and um, share that with me. And until then, we will catch you in July where I have a uh, Kimber Cable IEM a reveal it's the uh, phoenix i'm gonna hope i do an unboxing of all three im cables they are end game god level uh uh, uh im cables pure silver uh copper silver hybrid and copper and uh i'm gonna do an unboxing and overview of those with you guys okay so for now i really wanted to get something out man i did not want to leave june empty it was killing me i wanted to say hi to you guys bring you into the home and uh and there we go so I uh, look forward to your feedback on what comes first, the amplifier, preamp, or the uh, speakers. Until then, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.